All right, I'm here at my first bag drop, which is actually gonna be my last bag pickup if I make it this far. This is the Blue Heron Mining Camp area. I'm gonna cross the Blue Heron Bridge over the river and onto a section of the Kentucky Trail. Hopefully we can find a good spot to hang this bag. Each one of my bags has a 40 foot length of rope attached to it, which will be wrapped and tied around a number two stone. I wanna quickly be able to deploy this into a tree when I reach my drop bag destination. There is a chance that it could be getting dark. So I wanna have all these rocks ready to go, and ready to throw up into a tree to quickly tie off. All right, here are all six drop bags, one for each day. Each garbage bag has a gallon Ziploc bag inside with the next day's food, as well as that night's dinner. Every bag also has a dry pair of socks. Each bag also has a pair of shoes. And I plan to leave these behind after I restock my pack each night and we'll pick them up on my way home upon completion of the trail. One thing I had to take into consideration when planning where to put my drop bags was not where I'm going to end up each night. Um, they're closer to eight to 10 miles sooner than where I intend to end up each night. Um, I don't want to get into a situation where I, I have some issues and I can't make the mileage that I'm planning to make. So uh, as a precaution, yeah, seven to 10 miles, I'd say, ahead of where I plan to camp at the end of each day. All right, my pack of choice for this through hike is once again, the Light AF Curve 40, frameless. And with food, one day's worth of food and water, I am currently at 18 pounds, so I'm pretty happy with that. And I'll be starting off with the Topo Athletic Ultra Venture 3s. Love these shoes. I wanted to give you a quick glimpse of my timeline spreadsheet for this attempt. We'll start over here. I plan to go sub seven days, hopefully closer to six and a half. Just depends on how I feel and how the weather is. Starting on Monday, November 28th and finishing Sunday or Monday, December 4th or 5th. As you can see, I will be starting at 9 a.m. instead of my normal 4 to 5 a.m. trying to curb those stomach issues a little bit. So it's still the same amount of time. That'll give me more time at the end. As you can see here, my total mileage each day is going to be around the 50 mile mark, except on day one unless I feel good when I get the cave run. And I'll keep on going into the later into the night, hopefully somewhere between cave run and clear creek. And over here you can see my food bag drop locations. Cave run, natural bridge, Arvel, 49er diner, Cumberland Falls, and Blue Heron. I would love to have one closer to Bandy Creek area, but it just extended my drive significantly. And I'm gonna be short on time putting these drop bags out. So Blue Heron's gonna be the final one. Hopefully that can get me through the final 70, 80 miles or whatever that is. This is where I'll be camping each night. And then here's kind of the times I have to be finished by to go six and a half days or sub seven or worst case scenario to still get the overall. And a special thanks to these three fellas that are helping me with my transportation back to my truck at the Northern Terminus. up here on top of the Blue Heron Bridge. The last time I was here was during my unsupported FKT attempt. And I spent the night here. Well, after 23 hours of hiking and 55 miles, I am here at Blue Heron. I actually set up my pad and quilt and laid right there. Had all my supplies on this bench. And it was raining, so it was the perfect place. All right, let's go see if we can find a good place to hang this bag. Well, here it is. I'm underneath the Blue Heron Bridge. Ah, I don't feel like this is the safest spot because someone could uh, see it over here on the trail and come and investigate it. And I forgot to write my name on it. You know, the only thing I have on there is Saturday night, Blue Heron with some reflective tape. Well, it's gonna have to work. Time to get moving. Okay, the bag we're gonna stash here is right here at the Cumberland Falls Bridge where the trail re-enters back into the woods. 
Let's see if we can find us a good spot in here somewhere. It's always difficult when you got a steep hillside right beside you. All right, I found me a spot. There's the Cumberland River right there. You can just barely see the bridge. Came in on the trail and came up here right next to this big rock wall. And there she is. It is visible from the trail, so I am kind of concerned, but uh, fortunately, um, I will be picking this one up before next weekend if I make it that far. So I doubt there's gonna be very many people out on the trail around Cumberland Falls after today. So hopefully it'll be all right. Right down the forest road here is the 49er Diner truck stop. And I am right here at this uh, second little kiosk, old kiosk that aren't used anymore. And my bag is right back there, about 100 feet in the woods. You can barely see it right there hanging in a tree. Drop number 30 complete, heading up to Arval next. I'm currently here at Arval on Hale Ridge Road. Trail goes right back in the woods right here. There's the blaze. Let's go find us a spot to hang the bag. All right, there she is. I don't like how it's so close to the tree because a squirrel could probably get in there and open it up. It's about seven and a half feet, eight feet off the ground. But that's gonna have to do. I got a skedaddle on to Natural Bridge. This is a very important bag because after the rain on Wednesday, there's a cold front pushing in and it's gonna get down to low to mid 20s. And in that bag, I have not only my food and a dry pair of shoes like all the other ones, um, it also has my puffy. So the first uh, three days of this attempt, I will not need my uh, down jacket. It is in that bag, so hopefully it stays dry. Hopefully nothing gets into it and tears it open because I will be relying on that thing. And if something happens to this bag, I'll probably have to abandon my attempt and just hunker down to my tent and quilt and keep warm until the weather takes a turn for the better. Alrighty, let's move on out to Natural Bridge for the next stop. All right, I'm currently at Whittleton Campground instead of Natural Bridge. I thought about hanging it underneath the uh, little suspension bridge that crosses the river at Natural Bridge, but I thought, you know what? Let's just come into Whittleton since I gotta walk right through the campground anyways. Now, originally, I had it inside the shelter house, but the more I thought about it, I was like, man, raccoons could get a hold of it because there wasn't a bunch of high rafters in that shelter house. So I put it in a tree right here by the shelter house. That one should be good to go. Off to Cave Run Lake next. Finally made it to Cave Run Lake. Walking up the trail a little ways here. Find me a good tree for my final bag, which is actually my first bag. This will be the first one I come to tomorrow night. Final bag is hung here at Cave Run Lake. Just off the trail, right up there. I think it's pretty much out of eyesight. So this took me 11 hours today. I left home at six o'clock this morning and it's five o'clock right now. Heading to Moorhead for a quick bite to eat and then up to the Clark Farm Shelter on Dry Branch Road to get a good night's sleep. I finally have arrived to the Clark Farm Shelter here on Dry Branch Road. I'm gonna go set up my pad and quilt on the picnic table and get some shut eye. I'll see you guys in the morning for the beginning of my self-supported attempt on the Shelter Way Trace. Good morning. So there has been a little change of plans. Stay tuned and I'll fill you in. Okay, here's what's going on. I'm currently back at Cave Run Lake. I stayed at a Clark Park, or Clark Farm uh, shelter there on Dry Branch Road last night. Had a terrible night's sleep. Dreamt all night of things going wrong on this attempt. My air pad deflated on me partially, twice. I just couldn't get my head into the game. And without being mentally into this thing 100%, there was probably a good chance I would not have completed the full shelter we trace. Probably would have made it three or four days in and ended up bailing. You gotta be into it 100%. You gotta have your head in the game to be able to do something like this. And I just wasn't feeling it this time. Earlier I was, last night, 
I was prepared. You know, I, I went through an entire day of dropping my bags, my six drop bags, and I felt like I was ready to go. But uh, yeah, I woke up and I knew that it ain't gonna happen. So here I am back at Cave Run Lake to pick up my my first uh, drop bag. After I leave here, I'm gonna make my way back down the trail towards Blue Heron and pick up my five remaining drop bags. And since I'm here, I'm gonna go find a nice trail to enjoy a leisurely overnight hike on somewhere and make the most of this experience since I have so much time invested in this trip down here already. So hopefully this trip won't be a complete bust, but definitely not how I intended it to go. All right, let's go get these bags and get back on the road. You know, even though things have taken a drastic turn for me, I'm still excited for today because I'm down here in beautiful country in Kentucky and I don't know where I'm gonna end up tonight. I don't know what trail I'm gonna hike on. I don't know where I'm gonna have my campfire tonight. It's a mystery. Well, I finally collected all six of my drop bags. The final one was here at the Blue Heron Bridge. And now that I'm here, I decided to go do a little trail run. They have a 6.3 mile loop called the Blue Heron Loop. This supposedly has some pretty spectacular overlooks. Let's go check them out. All right, we're just a hair over a half mile in. Check this out. Dang, this is sweet. Oh, someone's had a fire up here. Pretty spectacular if you ask me. Wow. By the way, that's called Cracks in the Rocks, where we were just at. If you're here and doing this loop, expect some climbing. I'm going clockwise. I read on REI, uh, the hiking project, that clockwise is better. Get all this climbing and stairs all the way first. See the views and then finish up down by the river. Boy, this should get your heart pumping. Here at a little junction, there's the way we're going. I wasn't gonna take any side trails, but man, it's only point two. Let's go check it out. That wasn't too bad. After a little climb, you just have 100 yards down this little paved road to the overlook. This is pretty grand. My goodness. I'm guessing we're going to be heading over there next because I see like a sign or a bench or something. There's the beautiful Cumberland River down there. So somewhere over here is the Kentucky Trail and the Sheltoe Trace. I don't know exactly where, but on my two through hikes, uh, one of them was during the day. And I remember being over there and looking over this way and wondering if I would ever be here. And here I am. Spectacular. Wherever I was at over there looking over the gorge, I think I remember seeing that little bench or sign or whatever that is over there. All right, let's get moving. Along the Blue Heron Loop, there are two spots where you can park and jump right on it without going all the way to the bridge. And we're back on a paved trail, it looks like, for a little bit. Here to another intersection. Devil's Jump Overlook down that way. Let's go check it out. And then we'll come right back up here and get back on the Blue Heron Loop. Hopefully this one's not very far. I bet this is where I saw that. It looked like a bench or a sign. My goodness. I'm so glad I did this loop. This is amazing. It's making me wish I just would have stuck with my attempt that I had planned. It may have worked out. This is Devil's Jump Overlook. And this is what I saw that I thought was a sign from the other overlook right up there. And I could also see this from the Kentucky Trail of the Sheltoe Trace somewhere over there. 
And those of you who have run sections of the Kentucky Trail and have done the No Business 100 probably have heard of Dick's Gap. Dick's Gap is somewhere over in there, I'm guessing. And then you have Ledbetter and Peter's Mountain. Beautiful. A little cloudy today. Gives it kind of a different look and feel. All right, back at it. I saw the stairs coming off the road up there yesterday and today. And I was wondering what it was. It leads you down to the Blue Heron Loop right at the halfway point. Pretty cool area right here. Wow, that is a large overhang. Jeez, it is. Man, this is a big one. Well, we've worked our way down the mountain to a little trail connector, Laurel Branch. Up that way, and it connects to another great big, geez, maybe eight or 10 mile loop, I'm not sure. But we're just doing the Blue Heron loop today. Oh, we got two trails here, what do we got? This route is open to horses and hiking. Man, I don't know which one's which. I'm thinking this one down here is ours. Gonna check the app and see. Yep, I don't know what that one is. Ours goes left. Down, down, down into the depths. I never liked going down these in the dark when I was doing the Kiltoe Trace. Can't see nothing, you hear rushing water, and you got these tall cliff faces all around you. It's kind of spooky. All right, let's wrap this thing up. We got less than two miles left. Currently five miles in, down here by the Cumberland River. Water levels are way down. I bet you could jump off that rock though. It looks like Jump Rock at Red River Gorge. And it's the very first campsite I've seen. All right, I just discovered what that other trail was. It's the same trail, it's just the easier flatter trail that's probably for horses or vehicle access. The one I took was crazy. Lots of twists and turns and rocks and boulders and scrambles. Here at another one of these intersections. That's the easy way for horses. This is the Blue Heron Loop. Less than a mile to go. This looks like a boring grass trail until you look up around you. <laughs> All around us, magnificent. If you look down there, you can see the river, probably almost 20 feet below me right now. This is all below water. The water level is up to here. My head would be underwater right here where I stand. I've seen signs of it everywhere. It was during a huge flood they had, uh, I believe it was 2020, that washed away the Burnt Mill Bridge at the southern terminus of the Sheltoe Trace. Coming out to the finish here. Or at least a parking area. Probably still got a quarter mile to my truck. To officially complete the Blue Heron Loop, it goes up those steps and back to the top of where the, the bridge is. But we're down here in the parking lot where my truck is already, so we're just gonna finish it this way. There's the bridge right up ahead of me and my truck. No one here but me. Got the whole place to myself. I always get a funny feeling when I'm in an area that I know the Sheltoe Trace goes by. You know, it's right up there. A lot of 
got memories. One of the best memories I think I have is sleeping right up there during a the rain. A day before I finished my unsupported attempt. Well, that felt really good to get a workout in this afternoon. I'm going to start heading north towards home and hopefully find a campground before dark and get a fire started and relax. Good morning from Fort Boonesboro State Park, just south of Lexington, Kentucky. So yesterday after I left Blue Heron, I was hungry and I thought I would give Jeremiah Stringer a call because he lives in Somerset, Kentucky, just like an hour north of uh, Blue Heron. And he gave me some good suggestions. So I started heading north towards Somerset. While I was on that drive, we were texting back and forth and he said, by the way, why don't you swing by my house for a visit? We have the backpacking podcast tonight. And I was like, wow, that sounds kind of fun. I get to watch a live backpacking podcast in action. And he said, no, you get to be on the podcast with me and John Kelly. I was like, oh my goodness, are you serious? So um, I, I went to Jeremiah's house. He gave me the whole grand tour. Got to see kind of behind the scenes of getting the, the podcast set up. And I joined them for their hour-long podcast, and it was fantastic. I had so much fun. So thank you guys for having me on last night. I will drop a link to that podcast down in the description box if you guys want to check out that podcast with me and John and Jeremiah. You know, even though this adventure did not turn out how I expected at all, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It was a great experience. I had a lot of fun. Well, I'm all packed up and ready to head home and end this adventure. Time for some breakfast. As always, thank you so much for coming along. I really appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Jason Wish, wishing you a great time in your next adventure.